In November 1917, Russian Bolsheviks seized power in Petrograd and after emerging victorious in the Russian Civil War, soon established the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics or Soviet Union. In China, nearly 27 years later, in October 1949, Mao Zedong and the Communists emerged victorious in the Chinese Civil War and founded the People's Republic of China. As socialist states, the Soviet Union and China established close fraternal ties. In February 1950, the two countries signed the Sino-Soviet Treaty of Friendship, Alliance, and Mutual Assistance and maintained close political, diplomatic, and economic relations, particularly in the context of the ongoing Cold War with the Western countries. But in 1953, Nikita Khrushchev became leader of the Soviet Union. Khrushchev implemented peaceful coexistence with the West, which was a dramatic reversal of the earlier policy of confrontation with capitalist democratic countries. In China, Mao perceived Khrushchev's peaceful coexistence policy with the West as deviating from Marxism. As a result, Chinese-Soviet relations deteriorated, leading to a decades-long period of hostility known as the Sino-Soviet split. By the early 1960s, China and the Soviet Union were trading criticisms against the other side's brand of communism. In October 1964, Leonid Brezhnev succeeded as the new leader of the Soviet Union and adopted a hard-line stance on the West, but this did not lead to improved Sino-Soviet relations. Instead, relations between the two communist countries continued to decline. By 1963, the Sino-Soviet split had involved the long-standing territorial dispute between the two countries' poorly defined 4,400-kilometer common border. Moreover, China declared that its 19th century treaties with the former Russian Empire, the Treaty of Egon in 1858, and the Convention of Peking in 1860 were unequal treaties, in that the then ruling powerful Russian Empire had forced the war weakened Chinese Empire to cede to Russia some 1 million square kilometers of territory in Manchuria and Siberia. In July 1964, Mao stated that the territory of the Soviet Union was excessive and that the Soviet regions of Lake Baikal, Vladivostok, Khabarovsk, and Kamchatka formerly belonged to China. However, China made the clarification that by bringing up the matter of the unequal treaties with the Soviet Union, China did not seek to reclaim these territories but that it desired that the two sides renegotiate a final border agreement on the basis of present-day boundaries. For China, the disputed territory amounted to only 35,000 square kilometers along the common border. And of this figure, 34,000 square kilometers were located in the western side bordering the Soviet Socialist Republics of Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, and Tajikistan. Another 1,000 square kilometers were located along the eastern side running along the length of three rivers, the Ergon, Amur, and Yusuri rivers. China proposed that the boundary be fixed along the midpoint line of these rivers, which the Soviets rejected. As a result, tensions grew and both sides increased their forces at the border. By the mid-1960s, the Soviet-Chinese border was heavily militarized and hundreds of skirmishes took place, which increased in frequency in 1968. Soviet soldiers used physical force to remove Chinese fishermen and worker groups as well as Chinese military patrols which had entered the islands in these rivers. What became the trigger for the escalation of border clashes that nearly led to total war between China and the Soviet Union was a disputed, uninhabited Damansky Island called Zenbao Island by the Chinese, a small island located in the Yusuri River. China and the Soviet Union had regularly sent military units to patrol the island. The island soon became a flashpoint for armed clashes. In March 1969, China accused the Soviet Union of making numerous intrusions into Damansky, Zenbao Island. In December 1968 and again in January 1969, Soviet border guards used physical force to expel Chinese military patrols from the island. More border incidents occurred in February 1969. Then on March 2, 1969, Soviet border troops were again sent to Damansky, Zenbao Island to expel Chinese soldiers who had landed on the island. But unbeknownst to the Soviets, a large Chinese force, which was hidden and waiting in ambush in the nearby forest, opened fire on the Soviets. Fighting broke out with other units from both sides joining the battle. Chinese units used artillery and small arms fire from their side of the Yusuri River, while the Soviets sent reinforcements to the island from their side of the river. Following the incident, on March 3, 1969 in Beijing, large protests were held outside the Soviet embassy. 
In Moscow, angry crowds attacked the Chinese embassy. On March 11, 1969 in Beijing, demonstrators besieged the Soviet embassy in protest for the attack on the Chinese embassy. Then when Soviet media reported that captured Russian soldiers during the damansky zenbao battle had been tortured and executed, large demonstrations consisting of 100,000 people broke out in Moscow. On March 15, 1969, a second and larger battle broke out in damansky zenbao Island, where both sides sent a force of regimental strength of some 2,000 to 3,000 troops. Both sides suffered heavy casualties in the 10-hour clash. After the battle, the Soviets began a lengthy artillery bombardment of Chinese positions across the river and hit targets as far as 7 kilometers inside China. The two battles generated different responses in China and the Soviet Union. In China, Mao made efforts to prevent the crisis from escalating further. He ordered Chinese border troops not to retaliate to the Soviet artillery bombardment of Chinese positions in the Yusuri River. However, the Soviet Union viewed these incidents as a direct challenge from China. But Soviet authorities were divided as to the appropriate response. The foreign ministry called for caution, but the military wanted to initiate aggressive action. On May 24, 1969, because of the continued border provocations being perpetrated by Russian troops, China filed a diplomatic protest accusing the Soviet Union of inciting war. On May 29, 1969, the Soviet Union threatened to go to war with China. As tensions increased, so did troop deployment. Soon, 800,000 Chinese and 700,000 Soviet troops were massed along the border. The Soviets continued to initiate border provocations, apparently to incite a wider conflict. On August 13, 1969, in the Tailiketi incident, 300 Soviet troops supported by air and armored units entered China's Tailiketi area located in the Xinjiang region in the western border, where they attacked and killed dozens of Chinese border guards. By now, the Soviet Union was preparing for war. Meanwhile in Beijing, Chinese authorities were concerned about the growing threat of war with the Soviet Union. Despite appearing defiant and warning Russia that it too possessed nuclear weapons, China was unprepared for war and its military was far weaker than that of the Soviet Union. In August and September of 1969, believing that a Soviet nuclear attack would target China's main urban centers, the Chinese government prepared to empty the cities and relocate the population and vital industries to remote locations. Large-scale underground shelters were built in Beijing and other parts of the country. At Mao's urging, national and party leaders moved away from Beijing to different areas across China to avoid the government being wiped out by a single Soviet nuclear attack on the capital. By this time, even the Western press believed that war between the two communist countries was imminent. But war did not come. On September 11, 1969, both sides met and agreed to resolve their differences through peaceful means. However, Mao still believed that the Soviets might launch a surprise attack on October 1, 1969. When no invasion occurred on that day, the Chinese government became even more wrought up in war preparations, believing that the Soviet attack would be launched on October 20, 1969. On October 17, in anticipation of a major Soviet attack, Chinese authorities evacuated the major cities and towns, relocated the various levels of government to remote countryside regions, and redeployed nearly 1 million troops, 4,000 planes, and 600 ships to prevent them from being directly attacked. But October 20th, 1969 came and went without incident. The threat of a full-scale war abated following the agreement in September 1969. However, tensions remained high in the immediate aftermath and throughout the 1970s and much of the 1980s. Even in 1990, when the two countries had moved toward achieving political and territorial resolution, their shared border continued to be heavily militarized. The Soviets had 700,000 troops or one quarter of its ground forces as well as one third of both its air force and navy, while China had one million troops massed along the border. By the early 1980s, China had effectively abandoned Marxism and had adopted a mixed semi-capitalist economy. With these reforms de-emphasizing communism as paramount to China's foreign policy, tensions between China and the Soviet Union eased. In 1982, Brezhnev called for improved ties with China. In 1985, the Soviet Union began to implement drastic political, social, and economic reforms, which ultimately led to the disintegration of the country in 1991. 
In the 1980s, the Soviet Union also initiated reconciliation with China, which the latter received favorably. Border talks accelerated and China pledged to honor its 19th century treaties with the Soviet Union. Negotiations focused only on the currently disputed areas comprising some 35,000 square kilometers. In May 1991, China and the Soviet Union signed a final border agreement which delineated much of the frontier along the eastern region. Following the Soviet Union's dissolution in 1991, three former Soviet states in Central Asia, Kazakhstan, Tajikistan, and Kyrgyzstan became independent countries and also inherited from Russia the disputed western border with China. China has since resolved its territorial issues and signed border treaties with these countries.